Let's talk StarCraft. Kick it off to the bottom left-hand side of the map. Our blue Terran player will be representing Team Liquid, of course, in this best of three. And, well, just in general, I mean, not just for this one best of three. They didn't pick him up just for this series right now. He is representing Team Liquid. He is representing the Netherlands. The blue Terran player, it is Euthermal. He's going up against the red Protoss to the top right-hand side of the map. Give it up for Hurricane. Hurricane, da 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 da, da 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 da. Hurricane's kind of uh, come out of nowhere recently, from not really playing in too many events at all to suddenly playing a lot of online cups and honestly doing rather well for himself in a lot of these online cups. You know, he's been, um, you know, he did well in the Intercontinental Clash number two by O Gaming TV. He did well in, uh, he's been doing well all over the place, honestly, just to kind of put it simply, he's been doing very well for himself, so, it's been going nicely, and, uh, yeah, kind of cool to see him continue to play in these events, hopefully he has a good time, uh, some good times in some of the Korean events as well, would be neat, as he set up into this, and, uh, initially we'll just see an early probe scout, as you feel nothing too crazy from his point of view. Ah, it's like actually, you know what's kind of interesting? Having two TVP semi-finals, not a single Zerg in sight. It's crazy, right? So often we have Zerg players going deep in these tournaments. I mean, for go for SE2 example, we have Zerg players going all the way into the finals every single week, two of them. But, uh, yeah, kind of interesting to see kind of two TVP semis. In a way, it kind of makes me want a TVT final so that we kind of switch matchups up a bit. But it'd be cool to see a whole bunch of TVP, especially with the Adept nerf, obviously. Uh, kind of interesting to see it kind of play out a bit more. See a few more games of it. And again, do let us know who you're cheering on in the chat, guys. If you're going to be cheering on Euthermal, if you're cheering on Hurricane. Always excited to hear from you guys as to who you support and who you want to see doing well. And all the rest of it too, you know. So do let us know who you're cheering on in the semi-final match. Again, best of five finals after this between Euthermal and Alive. It's a good day of StarCraft, man. A good day of StarCraft. Cold Pro's transferred over to the natural. Just been following this one probe for now. As uh, Euphilm was opening here. Going to be a single Marine into a reactor. So we'll keep a little bit of extra gas because he doesn't have to commit to the Reaper. And that means his factory comes down a little bit faster than usual. And the faster starport as well because of it. So very similar to what we just saw Alive doing in game number two of his series against Hush, actually. Which was on this map as well. So actually pretty much picking the exact same build. As that Widowmine starts on up, the Stargate and the Starport building at the same time. And the Stargate from Hurricane, obviously, much more standard than what we sort of saw from Hush, I suppose. Well, we saw from Hush in game number one, the Stargate usage. And uh, he went into that Oracle, into the Void Boy base, kind of all in. So, despite it was a uh, Stargate open, it wasn't really still a standard way to play. There should be an Oracle first, obviously, get some good harassment early, some good map control. And from then, you have that Stargate up and ready to go into Phoenix and all the rest of it too. So Oracle coming on for here. Hurricane just going to pull a probe away in towards the natural expansion. As again, a couple of adepts from Hurricane setting up, seeing what's happening, seeing what's going on. Just two more gates building on up. Medivac will be popping out very shortly. Widowmine moves over towards the natural expansion. And as that Medivac loads, seven marines in it. Go up towards the upper right hand side. A probe coming down to the low ground here. Looks like the hurricane We're looking to take a nice quick third nexus. While also taking a second oracle as well. I mean, super standard. With these Stargate openings, you generally can get away with fast free nexus. Uh, you've come with the marine drop here. We'll see what he achieves with this. It should mean that he's got wooden mines in each of his mineral lines. He's got one here and he's got one there. They're hidden behind the CC or behind refineries. Just to try and make it a bit more difficult for those uh, for the oracle to find the kills. And then the Marines dropping here, they'll kill a pylon right away, no cancel there from Hurricane. This way the mine actually repositions itself, or did it just pop out? It just popped out actually. So, uh, just gonna stick around, just gonna see, now Marines find a depth. This is actually one of the kind of, uh, interesting points, which I think changes up quite a lot that we didn't maybe notice earlier. By the way, really cute micro out of you to keep those Marines alive. But yeah, with the depth nerf, it makes it a lot stronger to kind of fight with Marines against the depths early. And that could be a pretty big deal. And in the end, Euphemal cancels the third Nexus. Now, he did lose five SCVs. He didn't have much of a defense in this natural. The uh, Wooden Mine that was in position uh, just wasn't close enough to the mineral line. It was behind the orbital, you know. So, Oracle was able to get a good amount of damage done there. But now, turrets coming up will minimize further damage. And 
Again, you thought we picked off a good few adepts over here. He got rid of the third nexus. It's got potential right now as we see a forge and a twilight council from Hurricane coming in behind the mineral line on the natural as well. So the mine will start to burrow and will actually get lifted up by the Phoenix to make sure that it doesn't actually manage to burrow there. So it's pretty nice. Saves him from dropping the revelation down and a few Marines able to get away from this. However, Mayor Phoenix is going to start giving chase. Uh, does he have another boost in time? I think he just about does. It's very close though. In fact, maybe he doesn't. So maybe the Phoenix is... Uh, maybe he would have gone away there if he kept on running. Would have been very close. Anyways, we see the Oracle trying to come in once more. Unfortunately, it won't happen. Meanwhile, the Widow Mine in the National Expansion gets free work because the Widow Mine in the main gets another four in total. Good damage done is this Oracle from the left-hand side. Hurricane going to bring it back around and see where he can go with this. Liberator now here will be spotted by the Oracle, which is good information. Still has the two Oracles all overall as well, by the way, so it's good to uh, kind of keep the units alive here, I guess, as he'll now be able to use them to revel it and start to pick away at those uh, weapons. Does he not realize there's one in the mineral line in the natural? Oh, that's a nice save. Uh, oh, he actually ran into even more probes there. Six kills. Widow Mine in the natural going huge. Nine kills on just this single one. We'll pick this off now with the revelation. A little bit unnecessary to use the overcharge, actually. I mean, it had only just gone off, right? So, really no need at all to uh, use the overcharge, but... Uses it anyways. I guess now you can... I mean, it would have made really no difference at all. Scan, really well placed to actually spot that uh, Sasser's Ward right away. As you'll see, jump his tank. Marines here too. Liberators are going to start siege. No, but these are depths going to commit? No, they will not. It's a little bit scary nowadays to commit to that when you know there's the... Uh, less health on them. Another tank coming over. Would have mind's both cleaned out the main and natural as we saw previously. Means that it's just all about the frontal attack here. For, uh, well, for both players, obviously for Euthermal to execute and for, you know, Hurricane to defend as well. No real distractions elsewhere. No medivacs, by the way, for Euthermal. The one that's up is still, currently still sat in the main base. Very kind of uh, attack-heavy builds. You see two Oracles getting targeted down. That's really nice here, actually. Try and grab a Phoenix shot as well. Marines are going to split up to minimize the damage they take from these Adepts. Liberators will reposition to the side. Tanks get lifted by the Phoenix. Euthermal's army will get cleaned out here, although I can't exactly say it's too surprising given the circumstances. Tanks actually dropping back down, get another big shot off. As we will see, the Liberator is now cleaned up. Those tanks going down too. Euphemia loses a lot here, actually. I think maybe just a bit too aggressive staying out on the map by the point where he should have maybe looked for an opportunity to come back home and defend. And now there's Phoenix going to pull away. And towards the natural once more, we're going to see the depot setting up the uh, bunker, the turret as well. A couple of SCVs getting picked away out here and... I mean, it's actually going to be very difficult for Euphil to defend this counter-attack because Hurricane pushing forwards. A lot of adepts here. Obviously, there's a wall, and he's not going to be able to get into the wall, but he can shade right on top of that bunker. There's a Phoenix to lift the tanks. You can see those adepts, they do shade on forwards. The Phoenix may be a bit slow to commit forwards here, and actually, he's going to lose a few adepts. Some SCVs going down as they get pulled forwards as well, but yeah, Euphil will defend, and hey, defends long enough to get his stim pack and combat shields perhaps finished up, so... That's a pretty big deal. Obviously, it's kind of the turning point for him for the kind of next stage of this game to come into play. Having the upgrades on the bio makes him so much more powerful than just being completely upgradeless and kind of relying mostly on kind of tank, fire, liberator, play, etc. The tech heavier units to kind of keep you alive and keep you into a better position throughout the game. So you fell up on a few more units down to the low ground. Here's we see these Phoenix coming forwards and towards the main and. A turret again lifted, a couple of S, well, not a turret again lifted, but a SCV or two again lifted here and there. We're actually going to see the siege tank again lifted and taken down rather quickly also. You feel like building another factory. So double factory play now. So far has been very much so focused on kind of uh, tank production, obviously, and I guess one of the major questions we should ask ourselves going forwards is will he stick with those tanks or will he look for that transition into Widow Mines, which is a bit more, uh, you, know, you know, to be a bit more expected, I suppose. Robo-Bay comes on down here as well from Hurricane Forge on the way up in the natural too, and Nexus also just coming up to the far right hand side. Blink is uh, going to be finishing also and just going to be seeing these Phoenix still looking around to see where they can get up to, what they can get up to in the near future. Armory and an engineering bay from Euphermal. We're setting up into both of those, the Phoenix will come forwards and, well, that CV's starting to be lifted already. A few Marines moving over to the side, a couple of mules will drop down as well and now we're going to be seeing one of those Phoenix getting picked off right away, so that's nice. One Phoenix dropping. Getting seven workers killed is pretty neat too. I'm just going to be seeing this couple of medivacs boosting away. Marines coming forwards again and does get another Phoenix kill. Not really a bait with the medivacs, because I mean, he actually very nearly lost one, but making the most out of uh, being pulled out of position there, I suppose, as we see now. Double Robo and Colossi production has started, allowing the Protoss player to just hit the next stage of the game. And 
I feel as though this is what we're going to be seeing a little bit more of out of Protoss players in the, uh, you know, in the near future. Just actually the kind of going back in towards more transitions as the Terran players can have a bit more survivability against Phoenix Adept early. We'll see a few more transitions out of that um, kind of Phoenix Adept playstyle and in towards the, you know, the double Robo Colossi, which is what we expect it to be. It's what we saw a lot of during Katowice. It's just in the past month or so, Protoss players really realized how aggressive they could be without the transition, and that's where Terran players have really struggled. So, probably we've seen this transition a lot, but uh, in the kind of coming future as we see Euthermal. 20 army supply lead, trailing on workers quite heavily as we see these Phoenix picking up some good damage. And, uh, well, this tank will actually get repaired by some SCVs to keep them alive, or to keep the tank alive. It's not bad, only four Phoenix left on the map. It's really putting uh, Hurricane into a weird position with his army composition. Obviously, he's going to have Colossi. He's not really going to have many Phoenix to utilize at all, as we see Euphermal moving his fourth float base into location right now, floating that over. And while he floats his fourth base over into position, and 2-2 comes up from either side, Euphermal, I mean, Euphermal also doesn't have an army which is really ready to fight Colossi, or at least a high number of Colossi, it's just tank-based. So he's a Colossi now with this scan, I mean, surely he had to be expecting this, as some kind of, you know, as a transition. I guess if Hurricane attacks into Euphermal, the tank line will be very powerful. But if Euphermal tries to move out onto the map, I feel it's going to be very difficult to actually get anything done with that at all. It's going to be a weird few moments. See a Disruptor on the way as well. One of the very powerful things about Robo Bay play nowadays is that once you have uh, three or four Colossi, the switch into another form of uh, kind of splash damage, aka Disruptors, is very quick and easy to come by. Pillar Disruptors can just cause such chaos as well. Because you never know, you know, it only takes one Disruptor hit to kind of change everything. And... You know, even if they don't connect, the fact that you're going to force the Terran player to pull away, split away, it'll lose some of his, uh, you know, it'll lose a little bit of time that he could be putting damage out and so on, so. A few disruptors out in is never going to be a bad thing. Still very much so just focused on siege tanks as a way to play against. There's four Colossi in the skies. Marines will stem forward to pick off the Observer there. Okay, position himself in the middle of the map a little bit, and you feel we will siege up as, ooh, Hurricane very far forward. Maybe this is a fight that's going to happen. I remember that Euphilm, because of his lack of SCVs, is still ahead on the army supply count quite drastically as well. Upgrades are even 2 2 apiece, and so. I don't know if Hurricane really wants to take a fight at all. This disruptor shot's pretty nice. Probably one of the better disruptor shots he'll be expected to get here against someone like Euphilm, who's not really prone to making mistakes, such as not splitting away from disruptors, etc., right? So. That's not a bad start. Damages a tank, gets a few bio units. A few of these Phoenix, while not a lot of them, could still lift up a few tanks going in towards an engagement here as Disruptor Shot comes towards... Oh my god, it's disgusting! It kills so much bio! That Disruptor picking up 18 kills, and that's going to be the start of this engagement. A lot of the tanks getting lifted, as we mentioned, may very well be the case, and really just a lack of bio on the ground. However, tanks getting dropped back down by the Phoenix. They're still dealing a lot of damage as well, and Euphermal will hold his position here in the center. Man, that Disruptor shot, 18 bio units, if they're in that fight, things just begin to look so, so different from the very, very get-go. It really is quite insane. Is he going to see some Marines pulling back? And all said and done, as we uh, begin to kind of calm down for a moment or two, we're going to see a couple more models come into play and a couple more Archons as well. Free free upgrades on either side are actually pretty evenly timed, so that's not really an advantage either player is looking towards having. Marines coming over and will force the Phoenix to drop that tank. Actually, the tank is uh, just going to get dropped by time. Hurricane does not pay attention, so does lose a few more units over there, and he maybe should have done. Meanwhile, expands himself in towards this uh, central position, and well, tanks hold this position at the front once again. This time, Zealous will charge on forwards. Disruptor shot fires in towards the tanks just to soften them up a little bit. As you can see that this army of Hurricane will just keep collapsing onto Euphermal, and Euphermal cannot hold this central position any longer. Hurricane took him a few fights, but in the end he's able to break on through, and it's going to be pretty much game as Euphermal backing away towards his natural. Hurricane will not continue to push right away. He'll maybe just wait for the storm to come into play. I mean, he's got plenty of high temple in the back as well. But Euphermal really doesn't have much to play with, and actually going to be down an upgrade or two for a few seconds as well. Maybe Hurricane doesn't fight in this time in window where he's got the upgrade lead, but I also feel he doesn't really have to. I mean, just the army supply lead is more than enough right now for a good fight out of Hurricane. Even we'll start dropping around and maybe trying to be a bit of a distraction to slow his opponent down here to stop anything further from happening for the next few moments. Comes up to the top side and 
Well, and again, Stalker just doing a little bit of damage on Marine there, right at the front, and a few tanks sieged up. Drops to the right-hand side as well, just gonna, again, try and be a distraction, but the thing is, Hurricane knows that Bufemil, what he wants to do, is to stop him from mining, you know, to stop him from attacking, to, you know, waste his time. Here we go then, big push forwards, Immortals will help to chew through the tanks, the storm as well, and while Hurricane is losing a lot of workers, it's just not gonna be enough to just... Let's see how this is going to be as we have to the bottom left side of the map our blue Terran player representing Team Liquid. It's Euthermal, looking to try and tie this one up of course. Bottom right, Red Protoss player, it is Hurricane. How are we all doing in the chat? What's up Diddler05? How are you doing today buddy? What's up Zadokav? He says, Wardy, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, thank you very much. Four Amazon commercials in a row, hashtag feels bad man. Hashtag pays the bills, man. Thanks for watching that. Appreciate it, guys. As we set up into game two, there's best of three. Just waiting to see what will happen here on horizontal spawns on Cactus Valley. Let me have a quick drink. I had time to go and get myself some new water during the break, but I didn't actually get a drink any. So I'm going to mute myself for like 20 sec. Uh, maybe not 20 seconds, but a few seconds just to drink some water, guys. Yubby. Beautiful. Okay then. What's up guys? How are we doing? And what's going on in the game? Well not a lot. Gate Nexus Core. First is what looks to be the same build from Euphemal once again. Marine expand into the reactor or so. Nice fast factory as we mentioned last time. Does just give you that, that little you know that factory that little bit sooner. Which can obviously go a long, long way. So CC starts to build on up, and we do see the factory dropping down as aforementioned, and there's going to be a mule and a uh, SCV building. Again, nothing really crazy at all. You found the scouts the correct direction to begin with, scouting the counterclockwise way, as is Hurricane, and Hurricane is going to pop up in towards the uh, main base as well, so obviously he doesn't see his opponent just yet, knows that horizontal spawns, unfortunately for him, means he doesn't get time. Have a look at the build order of Euphemal in the early stages, so... A little bit less info for him, you feel nice scout, sees the expansion especially, gives him a lot of info. We'll actually uh, patrol the uh, SEV over here and I wonder, I wonder if we're going to be seeing the uh, starport dropping down from you thermal. Just in a proxy location to apply a lot of pressure quickly, could be something which goes a long way and uh, could get quite a bit done. Oh, starport is going to come at home, so the SEV here really just looking for kind of a scout on the faster third base or something along those lines. So, uh, setting up towards that. Stargate, gonna be, uh, finishing up here from Hurricane as well. So as that Stargate finishes, we are gonna see Probe going in towards the center of the map too, so... Just, uh, has finally obviously seen kind of Euphemal's building. Knows it's an expansion at least. I mean, for now, that's pretty much all you really need to know. Where'd the SCV go? I lost it. Did it die? I think it died just trying to get another scout off, see if there's anything else going on. Answer is not really. As the Stargate does come down. Oracle on the way up, and yeah, you have definitely not seen that so far. Viking going to be the opening this time around, so not going to rush in towards that drop. Instead, just getting the Viking to keep himself safe here in the early stages. These Jax of Gears just building up as we see actually three Adepts going to shade forwards. They're going to commit. They are. Marines being kept out of vision range for a little while there initially. It's actually pretty nice from Hurricane. Gets two kills and then actually begins to back away. Which uh, means he doesn't actually lose an Adept. So two SCV kills. Initially I thought this was a bad idea because I thought he was going to lose all the Adepts. But being able to pull away as he did works out well for him. And ooh, at the same time Oracle in the main base. Six workers now down. Ah, he flies into the Widow Mine though. Oh, he gets away though. Oh, this is back and forth. I'm all over the place for my casting of it. Hurricane backs away, overall six workers killed. Not bad, four kills on the Oracle, two on the Adepts, loses one Adept in the end, and I'd say that's pretty good. A lot of lost mining time too, if we hop on over to the income advantage, look at it. As Euphemal pulls away from mining his main base and his natural at the same time, pretty much all of his eco disappear in there for just a few seconds, so... Hurricane taking just a spike of an advantage, and behind this, a third next on the way, this time no Medivac, and so Euphemal can't just start a drop Marines as a way to kind of answer 
the third Nexus coming on down like he did in the last game. Actually, you only see the one Oracle this time as well. There was no second Oracle built. So Oracle straight into a Phoenix will just help him a little bit with shutting down a Medivac, etc. Which tries to come across the map early. Moving forwards, Phoenix will do a little bit of tanking against this Viking. Actually, will force the Viking back. Oracle taking a shot too as well. And I mean, Viking can be repaired. And this Oracle and Phoenix can recover their shields as well. It's nothing really too crazy. Resonant Glaives and plus one now on the way for Hurricane, so setting up into both of these. Setting up, getting ready to go. Uh, just looking very standard kind of Phoenix Adept build order. Nothing too surprising. I mean, the Forge and the Twilight finishing and starting those upgrades at the same time, very indicative of Phoenix Adept play styles, and obviously that means the Phoenix will continue to come on out, and Hurricane just looking for some openings here of these Phoenix, looking to see if he can find something here and there. See if he can find some opportunities to get damage done as... See, the stim pack is uh, about halfway done. The combat shields as well continue to come into play as well. I mean, you feel much faster this game in terms of getting in towards his uh, upgrades. Last game of all of that tank production, he really seemed to slow down his seat. You know, his stim pack, his combat shields. He didn't have that until way later in the game than you might usually expect. And actually, he lost a pretty big fight early in the last game as well, Yuffie. Uh, on his opponent's side of the map, trying to be aggressive with the tanks. Recovered pretty well from it, but uh, still, that's uh, something that kind of put him back a little bit early last time. So, overall, I like it so far. Feels pretty, feels pretty good for you, film up until this point. Hasn't really lost anything. Lost a few SCVs here and there, but you know, for the most part, looking kind of okay. This point right now, we look back at the income and Hurricane holds a slight advantage. You film will start a push though, and again, with still in combat, it's a good opportunity to get some damage done. It's actually got a good amount of wooden mines as well, by the way, something we didn't see anything of last game. So that's going to be a little bit interesting to see how they develop. And a nice revelation here. Hitting the, uh, the wooden mines with revelation is so cool because it means that you're going to be able to target them with the Phoenix lifts way more easily than you would be otherwise if they're not, you know, if, say you've only got an observer. Because you've got to wait for that observer to fly overhead, and that's very risky. As soon as a scan comes down, you're in trouble. As you'll see this uh, initial fight, though. First force fields, a little bit of a mixture. I'm actually wondering if you could have continued to push there. All force fields were very late to come into play. I guess he doesn't want to push up the ramp knowing that his widow mines are very much so kind of down on the low ground. We'll just kind of stick with these and make sure they do get a chance to go off if the fight is going to happen. Still rallying units across through the south side. It's kind of coming down again. Phoenix overhead, adepts shading forwards. And if you know, saw a fight, he's going to start fighting some of these adepts. And I guess the idea is he wants these uh, widow mines to go off. But unfortunately, the Phoenix is able to lift them. And so you thermal getting pushed away. He's uh, getting pushed all the way back. Good defense by Hurricane, and so far, our turn play is not making much progress. Now, he is setting up a third base behind this, but again, I mean, Hurricane's been on a third base for quite some time already. You know, you look at this, his income lead is just growing and growing and growing, with the third base being saturated, and... I mean, Ufem is not mining out, but as he introduces more SCVs, he's not getting more income. He's just oversaturating until that third base finishes, so... Hurricane really just showing us the advantage of that third base being up and ready already. Working out very well for him. Marines and Roars picking off that Adept right there, and... Yeah, again, just looking around, seeing where they can go. Seeing what they can get up to. These few units is... Again, Phoenix Adepts, a few sentries to the right-hand side, looking to see what they can get up to as well as... And you see Adept shading forwards. Maybe just looking for a fight. I mean, Hurricane's been playing so well so far that... A fight wouldn't really be bad for him. A couple of Widow Mines, uh, one of them gets lifted. The other one just hit onto the Adepts. A couple more in the back here. Is there another revelation or any sort of detection? I don't know what is here as detection. We actually see the Oracle coming through now. No energy, though. And you feel trying to just start st stepping away. Another warping of Adepts or so to start coming across the map and joining this could be very deadly as we actually see the Phoenix lifting up some trailing bio and the Uthermal. It's just going to leave the game right then and there. Uthermal types out a